Hello everyone, I'm Slavik Litzhammer from Evolvium and today I want to introduce you Midpoint, which is open source identity management and identity governance platform. Let me start with the basic. Midpoint is fully open source. There are no strings attached, no proprietary parts. Everything is really available as open source for public. It's maintained by company Evolvium. And of course, Evolvium as a company have to earn its money for somehow. So the Evolvium business model is based on services on top of Midpoint. So the Midpoint as a product is completely open and available for the public. And Evolvium is providing uh, support or request for new features and similar products uh, as, as, a, as a services for its business model. At the same time, Evolveum is trying to support community. So we are maintaining maintaining mailing lists where the community can discuss. We are organizing webinars. And sometimes we are even having some questionnaires or other ways how the community can interact with us and provide us some feedback. At the same time, we are providing documentation and we are even maintaining contribution to both some source code and documentation from the community. And even with this, it's quite hard to get enough engagement from the community because the identity management, identity governance community, people who are early doing their job in this area, there are not a lot of them. So it's quite hard to get them engaged. But even, even though this, we are trying to do our best job to work with the community on this product. And important thing is that midpoint roadmap is also influenced by the community you might seem that because evolveum has to have have to earn its money somehow of course the midpoint roadmap is it's involved by the customers of evolveum or actually paid for the services but we are also taking ideas for the future development from the community and combine is combine all of this with our own vision how the product should be developed and steered in the future. So before we get to the technical part, what the Midpoint can do and cannot do, let me show you how widely Midpoint is used right now. As far as we know, Midpoint is deployed across 16 industries. And interesting one are education, because the education in identity management area and identity governance has its specific. It's usually more complicated than most of, uh, most of deployments in other industries because in education, for example, universities don't need to work with just employees, but they also need to work with students, with applicants, with alumni. And sometimes students are becoming employees later. So everything is more complex there. Then we have some government deployments. And I would say the, the, the situation there is similar like in the education, but luckily not that complex. And also quite large portion of our customers come from financial sectors. And that's probably the reason I'm also participating on this conference. And I will try to show you what features are interesting for the financial sector. Also to demonstrate the outreach of the whole midpoint, I would like to mention there are eight core developers in Evolveum who are developing midpoint. So it's, it doesn't seem like much, but eight professionals actually can do quite a lot of work and help to move the product forward. And also we have 28 partners of Evolveum, which are companies that part, at least part of their business is built on top of Evolveum's product Midpoint. So these companies usually are doing deployments of Midpoints or even some custom extension for the customers. And Evolveum, we are trying in the same way as we are supporting the community, we are trying to support and build our partner network to make sure that Midpoint can be available really for anyone. And it's not just the one company who is behind all of this. So now I would like to get to the technical part and I will start to explaining to you what, what identity management is. So main, main idea of identity management 
is to connect other systems and make sure that all the accounts are created where they're supposed to be and same way with attributes of these accounts or all, also other objects like groups, roles, and so on. So you can see here in the gray colors are some systems and application, which is part of the infrastructure in some, in some company. And then we have identity management platform, midpoint in this case, in the middle, in the blue color. So main principle from the left, you can see HR system and some partner registry as our source systems, which are connected to midpoint. And they are connected using a connector, which is just an interface to, to bridge the HR system or any, any source system with midpoint on a technical level, because all of the systems have different APIs, different ways to communicate with them. And the connector is a piece of code which do exactly like that, just translating from the system's internal language to the midpoint internal language. And same is on the right side, on the, on the target side, when the midpoint is again able to provision the data to all the target system. And it can be directly to the application or through some intermediate system like Active Directory or LDAP or even midpoint can feed some authentication authorization service, which might be, for example, single sign-on service, which then users are using to access the applications. And midpoint itself is just gather all these data together and you can put their rules, who should have access to what, and maybe do some data transformation, like create an email address out of the last name of, of a user or just create any identifiers, usernames, passwords, whatever is needed. So all of this is centralized in the identity management and identity management make sure that based on these rules that you configured, everything is then distributed where it's supposed to be. And also where you fire someone, for example, identity management make sure that the account will be deactivated or, or deleted again, based on the rules that you configured. So what are the main benefits of identity management? First one is building an infrastructure. Because if you have proper identity management, you have the first break of your infrastructure, then you can use this to build your other systems on top of it. And of course, this all helps you to automate as many things as possible. So you can automate the processes where the users come to your company and based of his position, all the accounts can be automatically created, email address can be created. There might be the process how to set up an initial password and force him to change it and so on and so on and so on. And in the same way, you can automate what happened when somebody is changing the position or when a user is fired from the company and you need to deactivate the account. So this is all built on top of your existing processes in your company. So you are just using identity management to automate parts of creating, deleting and manipulating with accounts. And at the end, this all will strengthen your security because when you are not relying on manual processes that someone will remember to delete all the accounts if the employees leave in the company, if everything is automated and controlled by the identity management, of course, it will, huge, it will be a huge improvement to your security because there is no, no, no space for human error. What, what is also a nice benefit is in identity management, you have unified view on identity-related data. So you can always check what is happening there who has account where, what are the rules for creating, deleting account, and so on, so on. And because you have lots of automation, you have to have some audit trail of what, what happened. So you can always check what was in the past, what is and what is supposed to be. So you have complete audit record, what happened since the day one. And all, all of this, all of these benefits at the end leads to one single thing, which is reducing cost. Because automation and having strengthened security means you don't have to invest to people who will do this manually. 
and at the end, deploying proper identity management will help you reduce either the direct cost or at least personal cost, because a lot of stuff can be automated. So what I also want to uh, show you, it's, it's the main midpoint strength or even principles for the midpoint and its development. And first one is adaptability. That means midpoint is designed to fit into existing environment. So when you are deploying midpoint, you, are, you don't have to adapt because midpoint force you to do something in a certain way. The exact opposite is the true. The midpoint will fit into existing infrastructure, into existing processes, and you will just use it to model what you already have and what you just want to automate. And for this, it has to be really flexible and configurable. And this, is, this is one of the philosophy of midpoint. If anything can be configured, it, it should be. And if it's not there, it will be added later. So we are trying really to build the midpoint to be as flexible as possible so you can configure every detail that you might need. And with that, it might come quite a lot of complexity because you have a lot of, lot of configuration option. But I think in this case, when identity management is a basic building block of your infrastructure, it's it's better to overcome that complexity than to be limited what, uh, by the system itself. So we are always preferring configurability rather than have the system be easier to understand because with this slight increase in complexity, the configurability always winning. Next strength is consistency because midpoint is mainly developed by the fixed set of developers, which has a common vision and common way to do things. And even when they are merging external pull requests, for example, they still maintain this consistency across all the midpoint. You, you, can, you can be sure that all the features works in the similar way. So when you understand one feature, another similar feature will behave in the similar way, will have similar UI to be configured and similar impact. And the similar principles is internal coherence because Midpoint is a single product. It's not a set of different application just glued together. Now it's a single product, which is really carefully designed and developed. Everything there works together. So it's internally coherent. So either feature you will choose that you want to use can be combined with any other feature that Midpoints provide. Everything is designed only to to work together, uh, to work together, and can be integrated into really complex workflows, for example. And of course, because identity management is heart of the infrastructure, it has to be stable, and it's connected to a lot of other systems that we show on the picture. So you need to be sure that it will be stable, and even some problems on these integrated components won't break it down. And with that come also robustness, because you, you want to rely on your identity management, even if something happened externally. For example, you recover some target system from the backup, you can rely on midpoint that it will detect this and fix the state of the accounts there. And similar thing if some administrator deletes some accounts by mistake or make some manual changes, as long as midpoint is configured and it should be to be the primary source of true about accounts and accesses, it will find it and fix it. So it's very robust. And the last, last principle that we are following in midpoint development is continuous improvement because the area of not just identity management, but also the identity governance is quite rich and there are new systems coming each day and even more complicated workflows and complex system comp which, which are relying on different components. All of these have to be integrated into identity management and identity governance. So we are trying to always improve and keep pace with this and try to make Midpoint a better product. And now when I explain the identity management part of Midpoint, I would like to move to the identity governance, which, which is, I think, the area that midpoints cover that might be more interesting for the financial sector. Uh, 
So I'm showing the similar example like in the previous, but now the, the midpoint, which is uh, in the blue color, is labeled as identity governance and administration platform. And what we add there are uh, policies. So internally in midpoint where you have all the data, you can define additional policies which will be applied and check and midpoint will, will work with them. And to be able to connect this to your, to your existing processes and workflows, there is a connection for some ITSM or workflow engine and also generic API for identity governance and administration. So what are the typical features of identity governance? You can support processes, meaning really, you, uh, for example, when you hire a new employee, there might be a process for that, saying exactly if someone have to approve it first or which account can be created and maybe some other accounts might be created only after he or she will change his or her password and even even then when you when you are sure that the account was properly created you will create the account on a sensitive system so integration of these type of processes then the policies which are already mentioned to be able to maintain some state in your system and check if some some states are always true then you might to verify compliance which is also related to processes and policies to make sure that you are compliant with some regulation, for example, and identity governance features will help you to do that. You can have some approvals workflow, which is also very handy. Then with, with, this, with, with gov identity governance, you can, you can make some analysis on all the data that you have because you have quite a lot of data, data about your users, their attributes, about their roles, accesses, mainly groups and other entitlements. And you, this is quite a lot of data and you can do quite a nice analysis on top of that and provide reports, which can be reports to support your operation to make sure everything is running smoothly and there are no problem, but it can be also reports for your security officers or managers to, to let them know what, what's happening and give them some overview. Identity governance also help you to build some life cycles of objects to make sure that everything is created and deleted as it's supposed to be following process and policies. And it can also help you with personal data protection because when you have all this personal data and you know which accounts are created and when as a part of which process, you can easily make sure that all the personal data are protected or even you can configure your processes that some data are provisioned and deprovisioned based on, for example, some agreements regarding personal data. What are the benefits of identity governance? Again, it's automation, but now it's different type of automation. When we discuss identity management, we mostly discuss automation of processes for creating, deleting accounts and make sure the infrastructure working. If we check on the identity governance automation, it helps you to automate your processes. And what your, your, not just identity processes, but processes in the company, what should happen when the new employees come or where employee is promoted to a different position, what type of accesses he should have now, should it be approved first, and so on and so on. And this, again, is strengthening to your security because this is automated, it was verified, it was designed, and at the end, you can rely on it. So there are, there are less manual steps in the process, so your security is is increased and it, it also gives you better control because with all these processes and policies in place you can delegate a lot of lot of management into different people but these policies and processes to help you make sure that it's still consistent and nobody even if they have rights to change something will have the really the, the power to break something critical and when you delegate stuff, you also might need to have some overview. 
either to be prepared for some audits to so have the data and check what's happening and what state was there like a week ago, but also to check a compliance with some policies or, or even, uh, even some regulations like GDPR. And then you have this overview on your data and what's happening with them. You can easily do that. And again, same it is was in the identity management part. All of this at the end is leading to reducing cost because everything that I just described can be done even without identity governance part four, but you will have to spend more manpower to follow some audit or check compliance with some policies, but here it can be automated. So now in the final part of my presentation, I would like to go into some in details of some identity governance features. And I will start with overview on your data, what you can do if you have this single platform with all the data, all the processes and places I just described, you can have there some dashboards, which can be used for day-to-day -day operations and provide you an online view of important data. So you immediately can see what is happening there and if everything is okay, or if, if there is some manual step that needs to be done. Using the similar principles, you don't have to have just the online view, but you might have some periodical reports, which are just aggregating the information, what happened this week, this month, and you might easily provide this to your managers, to security officers, or anyone who is really interested in that. And it can be fully automated. The reports can be generated as a PDF and sent by email, very easy. And of course, you can do it you can use it even for some technical features. And for example, for real-time monitoring of the accounts, which can be a great tool for your, for your help desk because they probably don't have access to all the system. So they are not able to verify if the accounts were created and with param which parameters. But if everything is integrated into a single platform like Midpoint, you can give them access only there and provide them just the tools to check if everything is correct. So just an example on the, on the big screenshot on the top, you have example of some simple dashboard, which shows you uh, status of the resources and what errors were there recently. And on the lower part of the screen, you have this report that I mentioned. This is part of the certification campaign, which someone have to review manually manually assigned roles. And you can see who was the reviewer, if the review was already there and if it was accepted or not. So this is a, just a visual, how it how it might seem. And this example, this is some, and the tool for the help desk I mentioned, for example, we can see user Leonardo da Vinci, which has two account. It is on the, on the screenshot in the left part of the screen. And if you click on it, you will get to the right part of the screen on the different picture where you can see details of this account. Now there are, now there are very technical information, but you can, you can configure that. And for example, for help desk only, only show relevant data, like the account is there, maybe what email is there. For some software, you might display licenses or groups or roles that the account has. But I hope you can imagine what you can do with simple tools like that. Then another feature are the policies. And policies are the great tool how to maintain order in some complex environment. Because if you imagine what everything, what, what is managed in the identity management, it can be quite a lot. You have, a, you have can have your organization structure with some managers, maybe some project structure, custom groups, lot of attributes, lot of roles, and one person cannot manage this all. So best thing is to dele delegate this to other people. Let managers manage their department and organization unit, project manager manage their project give users some autonomy to change their password, maybe change their email, right, depending on what, what you need. But then you can build policies on top to make sure even if the, if the whole management of, of the objects are somehow distributed, that there will be some basic policies to make sure that there are still order. 
for example, you might have some segregation of duties that no one can be its own deputy. Or if you have some really important role, like, uh, like uh, I, I don't know, CEO and uh, security director, it cannot be the same person. So you can put policies like that in place to make sure this is enforced. And of course, you can set various enforcement options because for some actions, like if I try to make myself my own deputy, that can be just denied immediately. But for other policies, for example, the policy that all organization unit need to have a manager, you, you, don't, you don't want to enforce this in all circumstances because sometimes you want to fire the current manager and you, you don't want to prevent this action. You just want to record it, know it's broken, and then you can, you can fix it. And this process of fixing is called remediation, which is just process looking for broken policies. And then you, it's displayed to you or to some, to some uh, like a manager of the identity management, identity governance platform who has to fix them somehow. And of course, this can be combined with other, other features of midpoint, for example, notification. So if a policy is broken, you can notify about it. If the policy is not broken anymore, you can notify it again. You can put it in the reports that I show on the previous page and so on and so on and so on. Some examples, segregation of duties, I already mentioned that. You might have a responsible person for entities. It can be roles, organization unit, whatever you can imagine. Or for example, you can set even policies to watch for the numbers of licenses uses on some target system. And even though the license management is automated because for example, all of your managers should have a license somewhere, you can still have the policies, which is watching if you are not exceeding the number of licenses you are paying for. And if you are getting close, it can be again combined with some notification. And if you are reached the limit, it might again, either show you the policy is broken or deny the action which will, which will break this policy. So a lot of option, what can you do with policies? And again, the main benefit is it's, you are maintaining some order even though the environment is complex and the control of the environment settings is distributed between different person. As long as you have these policies in place, you can make sure that everything will be tight and run exactly as you are expect. And last, last thing that I want to show you is compliance and consistency. This will allow you to build some workflow in the identity management and identity governance platform. And usually this is some, some form of approvals. So you can define that either users can request something on their own, for example, a role, or even if it's managed by some manager, it still needs to be approved for other people. For example, for some sensitive role, it can be some, some security officer who will check if really this person should have access to, to the sensitive role and then approve it. And part of this workflow, it can be always extended with something more, for example, escalation. So if the, if the person who is responsible for the approval is not acting on it, it can be escalated to a different person's or even the, even the approvals can be multi-stage, so have different people or different level who have to approve it and so on and so on and so on. Another, I would say, really critical feature is rest certification campaign. This is a tool how to make sure that even manually managed entities are always keep in line because you always have something that is managed manually. If it's a role, it might be some group or some uh, ad hoc projects which are short-lived and are managed by the individual people. And if something is manually managed, there is always a risk that someone uh, forget to remove the person afterwards or delete the whole thing. So the, these campaigns are, are a tool which will uh, go through a selected objects, for, for example, go through all manually managed roles and then ask responsible people for that roles to check if the memberships in that roles are still valid and they will either confirm it 
or they might make chance, for example, remove some people. And you can use the same principle and run it, for example, on top of your projects to make sure the projects are still alive and then still should be there. And if not, again, the responsible person will either mark it as a still valid or will delete it. So this is a really crucial tool, how to make sure that even manually managed entities are still in order. And the last thing are life cycles, which are similar to this certification campaign, but it's more towards the automated part of the way of the thing, because defining life cycles will help you with onboarding and offboarding not just users, but it might be also related to roles or your organization unit. So you can define exactly what should happen and when. So what should happen when users come? Should there be any notification, any approval process? It's again related to everything that I just described. And this life cycle just help you to tie it up together and use it to help to define your internal processes and to decide what will happen when the user will leave the organization. And it can be even more complex because onboarding, offboarding, that sounds easy. But sometimes you have reactivation. If the employee, for example, goes on a maternity leave, you want to deactivate the account because otherwise it will be a security risk. But when she comes back from the maternity leave, you want to reactivate the account and there should be process for that. But similar process should be there for, for example, for if the user is changing the position or if you are, if someone leaves your company and comes back after, after, I don't know, half a year, maybe you don't want to create everything from scratch, but you would rather reactivate the old account. And if you, if you are, if you have life cycles defined properly, it will help you to do that. And it will be fully automated and you may be sure that only the accesses that should be valid will be valid and not, nothing else. And this don't have to be related only to users, but it might be related to part of your organization structure, to your roles, to your projects, service accounts. Anything is possible. So to sum up my the whole presentation, I show you the midpoint and I show you the identity management part and identity governance part. And midpoint can combine both of this together. Midpoint is very feature rich. So it can do it can do a lot of lot of different things in your organization, and for that is designed to be customizable. So you can fit it in in your existing infrastructure into existing workflow and processes. Midpoint is fully open source. There are no strings attached. Everything is available, but is also backed up by Evolveum, and Evolveum is make sure that this. It is designed and developed in the consistent way. And also develop the Evolveum is provide services on top of that, but it's paid services. But the product itself, Midpoint, is completely free. So at the end, I would just like to provide you some resources where you can find more. There's main web page about Evolveum. It's complete documentation, which are mostly about Midpoint, but there are some side projects as well. There is a whole book about identity management in Midpoint. So if you don't like to read documentation, you might read it in a book. And of course, because it's open source, there is a link to all the source codes. At the end, there are two contacts. First email is mine. I would be really happy if you reach to me and ask me any question or what, what about anything that might be interesting for you and generic info at evolveum.com where you can also reach and ask about anything. Thank you very much for your attention.